extreme storms, hotter seasons. With a specialized degree in climate, he's pioneering the way we look at climate and how it affects our weather. Now, climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. In today's climate classroom, the vast majority of the world's oceans are warming, and that's leading to all kinds of problems like vanishing coral reefs, amplified algae blooms, and ocean acidification. But in one very isolated and iconic spot, the opposite is occurring. Waters have been systematically cooling, and biodiversity is thriving. 600 miles west of Ecuador, Rising on volcanic ridges from the bottom of the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean are the Galapagos Islands. It's said that the archipelago's vast diversity of life inspired Darwin's theory of evolution. Dr. Chris Karnaskis from the University of Colorado Boulder says the Galapagos can trace its uniqueness to Goldilocks geography that, and climate. We have penguins, and they're the only penguins uh, in the northern hemisphere are there on the Galapagos Islands. Otherwise, they strongly prefer much colder climates, but it's a little twist in the ocean circulation uh, of the tropics. That twist is the Pacific Equatorial Undercurrent, a deep, cool river of sorts, which moves in the opposite direction of the warm winds and surface water. The current starts in the western Pacific and moves east along the equator. When it hits the Galapagos Islands, the refreshing water is forced upward, bringing with it nutrients from the deep sea. Now here's the important part. Over the past several decades, that current has been strengthening which is delivering colder water, which also happens to be higher in nutrient content, which is good for the ecosystem. That's bringing um, the essential ingredients for photosynthesis, you know, up to the sunlit part of the ocean where it can um, lead to biological productivity, which is sort of the, the whole base of the marine food web. His research has been able to identify the reason for the stronger undercurrent down below. It's an attempt to balance the increase in east to west surface winds across the tropical Pacific. So what you do know is that there's been the strengthening of the winds uh, along the equator. So essentially strengthening of the trade winds over the past few decades. But what you don't know is exactly why. That's right. It, it's a wide open question whether that uh, that trend is part of a you know a response of the global climate system to our burning of fossil fuels or if that is just perfectly natural variability that could just reverse in five years from now. Karnaskis says the Galapagos remains lucky for now, a refuge from the harmful effects of climate change. But he warns there's no reason to expect this ocean current will win the long-term battle against global warming. You know, so we have a little bit of a glimpse into what could happen in the Galapagos because El Nino and La Nina happen every few years so we can sort of see what happens when there's this big perturbation or hit to the system and when El Nino events come along the penguin population just gets decimated and it's not because it's so hot that they die I mean it's not like that their their food supply has been cut off for more climate classroom go to wfla.com Jeff Berardelli eight on your side